And so when we say perpetuity, we're really talking about a financial perpetuity here. Uh, one of the things that is unique about when you're starting a company, you begin at syndication. That's the coming together of the work, coming together of the capital to form a perpetuity, and it's called a value perpetuity because we haven't really realized any cash flow as it relates to it. So that's why we see PMT right here. PMT, like on your calculators, if we have a financial calculator, we're going to see a PMT button that's associated with payment. That's getting to our first cash flow. That's going to be our first cash flow there. Related to uh, job shop, we have PMT1, PMT2. This is where the company transitions from just a startup coming together of resources into sort of what's beginning to look like almost a durable cash flow stream. But these are disparate payments from different accounts, so they can't be called one singular cash flow stream. As we move to a perpetuity, our model for business changes. It turns into one that's more recurring type revenue, so the CF actually becomes recurring. It's no longer just disparate customer, disparate customer. This is repeat customers over and over again. And that's why we have the formula for valuation that actually begins to hold is CF over R. And this is R perpetuity value. This is our benefit stream over the discount rate. This is where the time value of money begins to kick in and we as uh, entrepreneurs or on the build side, we can start thinking in terms of selling our company. So this is ultimately where we're at in terms of perpetuity. This is where all entrepreneurs are trying to get to, at least to a perpetuity. Now, if we're going to set our goals really high and we have like something like a Facebook, we have a growing perpetuity. A growing perpetuity in the formula has to incorporate what's called a growth rate. A growth rate is modeled with a G. So taking our CF over R, we can add a growth rate to it, and we don't add a growth rate with a positive. We actually subtract the G, a growth rate, because we're discounting the discount rate. We're making the discount rate smaller, which is going to increase the valuation, because when we decrease the denominator in a formula, we increase the, uh, the, equal, uh, the, the actual output of the value. So that's why we see CF over R minus G. That growth rate is really key to increasing the valuation of the, uh, of the company. Uh, moving from a growing perpetuity like a Facebook to a diversified company, let's think of diversified companies like GM, or not GM, but like GE, for example, that have tons of different divisions, consumer division, uh, auto, uh, industrial divisions. Those are where we're going to have to start valuing companies in terms of perpetuity itself, number one, perpetuity one, plus perpetuity two. These are where the differences are going to have to be factored in in terms of valuation. So those are the phases of the perpetuity. We're now going to move on to uh, looking at the different valuation methodologies that are used in investment banking. This is going to be really fast, but I want you guys to keep up if you can because we have a limited amount of time here today. So we're going to start out with the valuation methodologies. So we're going to erase. Does everyone have uh, phases of the perpetuity written down? Okay. Okay. Great. Public company valuation. The next one is called comp companies. The third is precedent transactions, and then the fourth is discounted cash flow. So we're going to model these on the chalkboard here, so everyone can see them, and everyone can write them down. This is super important stuff for understanding the nature of capitalism. What drives capitalism? Valuation and transactions. That's what drives capitalism. Things to derive the total enterprise value for a company are actually taking off the balance sheet. So this is what BS means. BS means balance sheet. Let's all write this formula down. This is one that I really want you guys to take away. Public company valuation, for example, Facebook, for example, some of the other larger companies that are trading on different stock exchanges. We're going to take their market value of equity that we calculate as being the share price times the fully diluted shares outstanding. And that's what's going to be the market value of equity. Plus, we're going to add the value of their debt from the balance sheet. Plus, we're going to add the value preferred from the balance sheet if they have any. Plus, we're going to add minority interest as well as subtracting cash. The reason we're subtracting cash here is because cash is already counted in the valuation of the market value of equity, so we don't want to double count it. And so now we're going to, if everyone has already written this down, I'll give you maybe just a, a minute more to write this down. We're always asking the question, what is the true cash flow of the company? And this proxy for cash flow that we're getting to is called EBITDA. 
Earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. That is the key that we're trying to get to. What is the EBITDA of the company? Build side is trying to determine this. Buy side, sell side. That's why we do accounting earnings analysis. That's why CPAs come in and analyze the books for a given company is because they're trying to determine what is the true EBITDA or cash flow of the company. And this is the one that investment bankers, if you're in investment banking, like you guys want to be in the future, you speak in terms of EBITDA. What is EBITDA? <laughs> so that is what you're going to be. So it's not EBITDA, it's EBITDA. That's all we're going to say. It. Pronounce it, say it out loud. Everybody say it out loud. EBITDA. Okay, perfect. Now you're investment bankers. Congratulations. <laughs> so uh, we're going to move on to um, we're going to move on to multiples based valuation. Actual investment banking deals get done. They look at comparable companies trading on stock exchanges and then they derive what are called an EBITDA multiple and a revenue multiple depending on what type of industry they're in to determine the valuation of a given target. Uh, in addition to that, we look at what's called precedent transactions and these are transactions, M&A transactions, mergers and acquisitions. M&A is mergers and acquisitions, so we have to know that as well. So we look at mergers and acquisitions transactions that have happened in the past, and we derive a valuation determining, uh, depending on their implied valuation multiple. Revenue, EBITDA, we're going to be using these to extrapolate a valuation for our given target. So for example, you're going to see things like this. Times EBITDA, times revenue. These are what we're going to determine uh, our valuation. So for example, times EBITDA, let's say, say the implied multiple it's called. <coughs> let's say the multiple is 10x. So if we have a, uh, a given cash flow, EBITDA, we're then going to multiply our cash flow times the 10x multiple to get the valuation of the company. That is what investment bankers do. They determine the EBITDA as well as the given multiple to determine the valuation of a company to then facilitate a transaction. So facilitating a transaction means getting paid, getting a fee for doing investment banking. So the key work for an investment banker is, who here has seen the words M&A? Has anyone seen the words M&A? Okay, maybe. This stands for mergers and acquisitions. Mergers and acquisitions. Merger is a, comp a corporation, a corporate M&A department, actually going out and buying a different company like Facebook. Acquisition is a, 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 si a similar word, but more on the private equity side. So mergers and acquisitions, private equity, as well as corporate M&A departments. All right. So that's, we've taken care of multiples-based valuation. So now we are going to get into What's called the final valuation methodology is called discounted cash flow. And discounted cash flow is what we talk about at universities. It's more of a theoretical uh, valuation of a company. A lot of professors like to reference it. Um, one of the ones, if you guys want to write this down, a very famous guy who discusses valuation is Aswath Damodaran. He's from New York University or NYU. He's the leading guy in terms of valuation, in terms of DCF. So DCF is what we're going to talk about in just a second here.